Now that we've prepared our geometry and our skeleton uh, by packing them all together uh, using a packed folder, we've given them unique names uh, and determined their type correctly. Uh, now it's time to rig with Apex. So what is Apex? Apex is an all-purpose execution graph. We use Apex nodes, we use Apex scripting uh, to build graphs that, in the case of rigging, define rig logic. That is to say, how should this rig behave? But unlike other methods of rigging and animation, uh, Apex will only execute these rig functions when we ask it to. If an asset has FK, it has IK, maybe it has a spine, maybe a look at, all sorts of other things. All of those things are executed all at the same time in traditional rigging and animation workflows. And that can really slow things down. It can destroy your performance. But by separating these two things, the uh, logic and the execution of that logic using Apex, we can dramatically increase our performance. And we can see an example of this um, logic and execution happening at the same time, uh, even in our very simple rig. We have um, our box and we have a single joint. And we're putting that uh, with a rig pose through a joint deform. And if we display the joint deform, we go over here and select our rig pose in the viewport, we can now move this around. And this is fine. We have a very simple box, just a single joint. Uh, we, we don't really have to worry about performance in this case. But of course, if this were a, a much more complex character, uh, there might be hundreds of joints, lots of different kinds of controls. But what's happening here is that the rig logic, mostly represented here by the rig pose, and the execution of that logic, the manipulation of the translate parameter in this case, is happening at the same time. And it's being uh, displayed, the results of that are being displayed by the joint deform. So all of this is what we mean when we say rig logic and rig execution. This is all happening at the same time, and there's no way to avoid that in this case. As you're building your rig up, you're always executing everything. But with Apex, uh, these two things are separated. And that's partly why this packed folder process is so important, because we want to very clearly define uh, the things, the, uh, you know, the, the stuff that we're defining in our character, and we want to operate on them explicitly. We don't want to operate on things uh, that we don't need. So in this video, uh, we're going to go through just the whole workflow from this point all the way to an animatable asset uh, using Apex. We'll see the entire workflow, and then in subsequent videos, we'll circle back um, and uh, look at things a little in a little more detail. We're going to add some more functionality. Uh, we're going to change our asset a little bit, add some extra features, uh, and, and look into more things. So we have this packed folder. Um, which again, we can look at in our rig tree. We have our base skeleton, our base shape, and our guide skeleton. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add something called an auto rig component. And uh, the auto rig name there isn't just some magic thing that takes an entire character and rigs it the way that you want. Uh, it's more like a helper tool. And you can find these just by typing apex. Um, and you can see auto rig component. Uh, and you can see all of the other Apex nodes that we've um, developed. So this auto rig component then has a couple of inputs. The first input is our character stream. And, and what that basically means is all of the things that we've packed up and defined uh, as our characters. So if we add that to the character stream, if we look at this other input, second input here, it's looking for a component script. Uh, 
we're not going to be talking all that much about the graph itself uh, or about Apex scripting, uh, but what this second input allows you to do is to define um, a, a, a script or graph separately from, from these nodes and then use these auto rig components. You can see by default, it says use snippet and that's where it's gonna get the snippet from, but then use second input. It will bring in uh, a graph that we've defined elsewhere. But we're not going to be doing that uh, in this course. We're just going to be talking about the, the built-in components. You can see that we have uh, a whole bunch of them here. Um, there will be more, and, and some of these are, again, Apex is in beta, so some of these are going to change. Some of their functionality might change a little bit. Um, but we can have a look at some of them, and you can see just exactly uh, what's going on here. So let's get rid of that. I'm going to take my pack folder and I'm going to feed it into this auto rig component. And I've given it the name underscore FK uh, just so that I know what I'm doing. Uh, and let's look at some of these parameters. So we've looked at this first component parameter. And here we're essentially saying, uh, where am I going to get my graph from? And in this case, the component source is this built in fk transform and that built-in fk transform is defined by uh, houdini file system packages apex geo fk transform component dot bgeo that's pretty weird that rig logic is being defined by a piece of geometry so i've copied that and let's just look at that let's see what that actually is I middle click, I've got 11 points, 49 primitives, and I've got a whole bunch of attributes. So this thing is obviously doing something. And if I look at my viewport, what is all this? This looks uh, like a mess, but it's not. This is the graph. And if we open this up, say I've got my rig tree, but if I go to my apex network view, you can see, and this Apex network view is, uh, in this case, a read-only graph. I can't um, edit this. There are nodes that will allow you to edit this graph, but in this case, I'm just able to view it. And if we look kind of at both of these at the same time, we can begin to see a little bit of relationship between these things. That we have something over here, and that something is a point in space, maybe if I go inside here, no, I can't go inside that one. But this guy obviously has lots of outputs and it's this node that has lots of outputs. And these outputs are being wired to inputs on other nodes. And that's what these points are. These points represent these nodes and the primitives between them represent the actual wires that are connecting these nodes. And so that's what we mean by a graph. And this graph is stored as geometry. Uh, there isn't any particular special reason why it's stored as geometry. It's just extremely convenient uh, because Houdini is very, very strong with manipulating points. And all of these points, if you look at the geometry spreadsheet, have lots of attributes. And Houdini is great at at manipulating these things. So storing this graph as a very portable piece of geometry, um, it's just sort of icing on the cake, really. But this graph is defining our logic. We have uh, some parameters, we have some inputs, we have things that we can manipulate. Uh, and it is this graph that defines our rig logic.